by request, I want to do a little bit on the, um, you know, the surface between uh, VPP and the DPDK. Uh, Vincent, you around? Oh yeah, good. Okay, so this, the, the, you know, this one, this one's for you. At any, at any rate, um, and, 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 and ser you know, seriously, folks. So here we are in um, the, the DPD, you know, the main DPDK input node. I'm not going to walk through the uh, through the, all of the threaded cases because they're not really interesting with respect to what I think you're interested in, which is to figure out, you know, how we're making the two the two children play nicely with each other. What 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 we have is that. I just wanted to, sorry okay. for interrupting you. I just wanted to mention that actually we have two parallel code uh, input nodes uh, in in the code. So one one is DPDK input, which is used for single thread and for uh, multiple worker threads without I/O, and then we have DPDK I/O input, which is equivalent function for I/O thread setup. So basically, case one and two are using DPDK input, and case two and four are using the DPDK I/O input. Yeah. So at, at any rate, the you know the plain old the, the plain old main DPDK input node basically goes a, goes across all the devices, and the um, DPDK init in its strip is is a lot to look through. So let's just look at what's going on on a per packet basis because it's the thing that makes the best sense. Let me also say uh, RX burst. Okay, this obviously this isn't exactly um, you know RT you know PMD RX burst, but you get you get the idea. It's doing an RX burst. You can you can look at that, and there's a little bit of early early, uh, early packet discard uh, you know code that's you know that's driven by some uh, router you know router QoS stuff. At any rate, not too interesting. Um, you know we say if, if if it's down you know. You know, again, we just uh, if the interface is down, we throw the buffers away. Film at 11. Um, early frame discard again. You don't want to hear about that because it's not really terribly relevant. And then, you know, here we go again. You know, get get next frame. You're basically going to, you know, um, in in the next few lines, what we do is we say a little bit of prefetching, but. MB, um, you know, MB is exactly a DPDK M buff. What we do is we say, as, as I said, the uh, the VPP metadata is uh, right, ex you know, right exactly tangent to the DPDK buffer metadata. So B0, the thing that VPP thinks of as the buffer, is uh, you know, is basically some number of cache lines below the, uh, uh, you know, below the uh, RTM buff start. Um, again. Early, early, you know, mem buff, blah blah blah. If it looks like it's segmented, we'll go pre, you know, prefetch ahead. Otherwise, this buffer init for free list guy zero, you know, zeroes out or resets uh, the VPP metadata, um, you know, as, as given. This this get buffer index guy. Is reducing an eight, uh, you know, an eight octet pointer to four octets because we really don't want to be pushing into the vectors uh, a bunch of redundant stuff. Turns out that the the buffer indices are actually cache line number offsets from the the base of the RTM buff pool uh, in question. That it just, you know, it it's you know it gives you some extra bits and makes it so that you can span a much wider virtual space. We're hoping that the DPTK isn't going to, you know, expand to fill the entire universe in terms of the virtual space that's consumed by the buffering. That that's one sensitivity. You know, it's currently not it's currently not a problem since we're using basically cache line numbers, but it, it could be in the future if folks are just, uh, you know, spray the stuff all over EVM. I mean, again, you, you know, there may be a unification possible, but so it's form a you know form a buffer index. Um, and queue it where it needs to go. This is a place where uh, we have a, a really interesting, you know, dependency or use of the, uh, uh, you know, the hardware offloads. That if we look at this guy, which we might as well do, uh, C scope, uh, fine global definition of that bad boy. What this guy, you know, you're gonna you're gonna recognize what we're doing here. We're taking the offload flags and and crunching around in them and saying, okay. You know, bad checks, um, yada yada yada. It's IP4. It's something else. Um, you know, there's some. You know, there's some paying attention to the RT version number. I mean, none, none of this stuff is going to come as a surprise. There's a little bit of is it IP4? Is it IP6? Uh, or is it MPLS? 
you know, please do something with it. And what that, what that turns into is we're picking the next index um, uh, from, yeah, there we go. Hey, what? So quick question on that one, right? Yeah. Um, since you've looked at pretty much every little piece of code, how much, how many cycles does that cost you? Look, looking at the offload flags? Yeah. A whole lot less than doing an IP4 checksum. No, agreed. But if you ran, for example, um, varied packet structures through it, right? I mean, IPv4, v6, something, 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 et cetera. Have you looked at the cost of doing that? I, I, you know, I, I haven't actually. In, in real life, you don't tend to run into v4, v6, MPLS, ARP, v4, v6, MPLS, ARP. Mm -hmm. If you did, checking the flags would be the least of your problems because you remember all the speculation in the graph nodes? It's going right. to fuck all of that. Yeah, so that, that's kind of what I was getting to, right? I mean, yeah. the, the way that I looked at solving this once before, which we never really put in a DPDK, was putting a sorter in front. In other words, just sort packets. Yeah. So that you get like packets to go together. That gets around the cache problems. But if you don't see this very much in the field, then no. I wouldn't worry. You know, it's not a, it's not a big deal. And, and, you know, imagining closing my eyes and how much you'd have to stand on your head to basically do almost an ether type sort at the front end of it. If you can get the hardware to do it, if you can, you know, you know, hardware you can get to, the software to do it in about four instructions. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. A sort. Well, the, yeah. The packet the, type sort. The, yeah. The, we have what? some hidden instructions called PCMP, STRI stuff that... You could do this with. Inter in interesting. We ought, we ought to talk offline about that one. But that, yeah, it, it'd be cool. I don't think it makes a makes a hill, you know, a hill of beans worth of difference in real life because typically if you have a particular interface, and remember the way this actually works is you get all the packets off one queue or one interface at a time and deal with them. Um, if, if you bet that one is a trunk port that's only doing MPLS over GRE or VXLAN, all the packets substantially going in and out of it are going to have the same in cap. And, yeah, you know, it, I the, mean, you know, by and large, right, so, so we experimented with two things. One is yeah. putting a filter in the NIC and saying direct packets in a certain way so, to a certain queue so that you get a sorted wow. array in, you know, easy enough to do. So yeah. I actually wanted to comment, but Dave beat anyway. me to it. Um, from the usability perspective, and I'm a network designer, or at least I claim to be uh -huh. uh, for 20 years now, um, I'm finding a hard time to see on a wire that it's not a hub but uh, not going to the hub, but to the switch or another active device to have packets coming with different types of encapsulations that the device has to process. But yeah. I'm not saying this is not a valid well. case. So let's maybe capture it as one of the usability cases. Yeah. And, and as a general rule, that makes me think about another thing. For things that the folks want to come up with in terms of coding the cool stuff, it's cool. Let's make sure we don't lose one thing, usability, i.e. have a use for it. Yeah. Well, in, the, in terms the of network design and and yeah. people actually Agreed. using using the code, yeah. testing a code, because otherwise that it will be yeah we could use the resources somewhere else. Thanks. Yeah. We, yeah. There, there's always there's always a trade-off. I I think if if you were to go to all the effort to do that in software, you might you could construct the case obviously, thank you, where it would work would yeah, work I infinitely mean, better. The question is how artificial is it? It's like that, sixty four byte packets. Right? So so ultimately, so look, I mean, optimizations about where you apply them. Yeah. Right. When I see four ifs in sequence, I know there's going to be pretty significant perturbation when you have yeah. branch prediction misses. Y you know, one, right. of the, one of the notes we ought to take is go engage with the research guys and see a little bit, you know, see if we can get somebody to go figure out what in real life in various deployments, particularly in the data center, particularly where we want to throw this stuff, what does it really look like? Because I just, I, I, I'm innocent, I don't know. But by the way, that's that's really the hard part of this, right? Is if you can look at the network traffic and you have some intelligence about network traffic, you can do a lot more of this stuff up front. Yeah. Otherwise, you're designing to the lowest common denominator, yeah. literally. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I think, yeah. Yep, 100% 100, 100 agree there. Okay, so at any rate. Sorry, Barry. What? Yeah. And yeah, good idea. Actually, Great idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that that <laughs> that would be great. You keep that. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, I love people that self-generate action items that will benefit everybody. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Keith. <laughs> Ed, 
mailing list? We're working on it. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. Okay. Yep. So, in, so at any rate, once. At any rate, so now that you know, now that we now that we figured out, you know, okay, we have we have an M buff, we get a buffer index out of it, we figure out where the VPP metadata lands. Um, next zero and error zero, um, you know, are, are passed into that that inline in an obvious way. And then what we're going to do is to is to do a little bit of uh, saying, oop, saying please don't type here. Um, L3, the L3 offset it amounts to, you know, are we going to be able to skip, you know, skip forward in the graph? And, you know, if we know we're going to IP4 input, IP6 input, or MPLS input, um, we know we know we can skip the Ethernet header because that's where the next layer of the network stack expects to find current data. So we'll set current data to. Um, you know, to that offset, we'll adjust current length to, to compensate. We'll say, okay, yeah, the current length is va the total length is valid. Um, oh yeah, this one <laughs> on I, on certain old ESXi servers. Uh, th you know, uh, well, l let me just show you the. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. At any rate, the only case in which you have to turn this on is if you're doing IP6 processing where the, uh, the lengths are checked a lot more aggressively. Um, otherwise, you might get an extra four bytes of data out of it. You know, don't ask me, uh, but it turns out empirically on old ESXi boxes, you need that one. Um, the RX and TX software IF indices uh, need to be set up. Um, the number of RX bytes. Uh, this this is actually going to put, going to be put in the interface counters. Um, there's a whole bunch of drama about uh, chasing you know check, chasing next segment pointers, which I don't want to walk people through. Um, oh yes, the tra <laughs> yeah bad monkey context. If you if you find that a certain kind of packet is going some totally random place you don't like, this will tell you know this will this will actually tell you where it's been. It's like internal trace route for bo bogus contexts. Uh, this one turns out is compiled off by default. We very seldom, if ever, have to turn it on. There's a corresponding show command that says, "Show me where this buffer, you know, where this buffer spent its nights and weekends, and you know why it has a hangover now, and so on." Um, the um, you know NQ by one. It turns out this is a case where we're doing you know one packet at a time because of the amount of cache pressure that handling each one uh, puts on it. Um, you know, mumble, 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 trace. If, if you end up needing to do the DPDK trace if it's been turned on by the UI, you know here's where that happens, and incrementing the uh, you know incrementing the counters. But that that's the, that's the RX surface really between uh, the DPDK and VPP. It's not utterly inexpensive, but it's not utterly gross either. N including the DPDK drivers, it's under 100 clocks, Damian, you've looked at this more recently than I have, but you know, that, that, you know, the node timings for that guy is like you know, a little under 100 clocks, yep. and that's inclusive, not exclusive of the DPDK time. So it's not real expensive, but um, ultimately, you know, that's, that's half of the story. Then on the way out, um, there's a guy called uh, device.c, under TX, oh, oh yeah, right, like there's gonna be thousands of those. Um, RT, right, um, and what's this all about? Oh, that's replicating packet, whatever. Um, S, node, okay, TX, all right, ah, okay. We haven't really gotten into this stuff before because we really haven't been into the device driver, uh, you know, the internal device driver APIs. Because most people don't ever have to have to touch this stuff. But at any rate, DPDK interface TX is the interface output routine for a given, uh, you know, for a given port. I was just uh, interface. All right. So here's what you have to do. Again, there's some typical vec, you know, vector this, that, and the other thing. Um, you know, if, if, if you should never end up oversubscribing the ring, but if it does, you just want to toss the packets, and you for sure want to toss them in a way where you're not losing the buffer. Um, 
there's nothing nothing worse than than accidentally leaking buffers. The code currently is real good about that. TXP cap enable. Uh, we're perfectly willing to capture in lib pcap format the packets we're sending, so you can Wireshark them. Wireshark is truth, and you might want to be able to do that on a on, on a regular basis. So here we are, um, you know, purring along, doing some prefetching, yada yada yada. Um, this, this some drama about about whether the buffer's been cloned or not. What I really want to show is this stuff. Um, it would be it would be really great if uh, the, um, the the PDK. Um, Metadata could be signed so that so that, so that I wouldn't have to go do quite this much standing on my head and whistling Dixie This is not expensive in clock cycles. It's expensive in brain cycles just to get it exactly right That you have to type really carefully or you end up sad um, But again what we're doing is we're just you, we're saying the VPP world is probably messed around with the buffer meta, you know, with its idea of the buffer metadata. We have to hand it back. This is simple arithmetic and not very many cycles at all to do it. Um, eh, replication, yada, yada, yada. Cloning, yada, yada, yada. So what do we do? And at the end of the day, um, where's the TX burst? Right. You know, at the... Uh, you know, again, this is just a wrapper, which uh, ultimately calls the correct PMD, um, you know, uh, TX vector, and off, you know, off you go. So it's just, it's really just a minimum amount of buffer metadata conversion. I should, for everybody's information, show the one thing that I did do. Um, you know, uh, build root, build, uh, build. I'll pick one. P to K. Now, to the one. Damian has done a really nice job on the packaging, and I'm hoping maybe he's going to get a few minutes to talk about it. But it's looking like we're running running out of out of time. Um, lib. Hey Venky, where's the where's the uh, the the, the mbuff lib lib mbuff. That guy, yeah, that's that's the one. Um, what did I do to this thing? I just this is one of the patches, and I we've discussed this before. Where um, just, am I just being an idiot? Yeah, no. Okay, maybe. What? It, maybe it will be easier if you open diff diff uh, file. Yeah. Well, that's actually. It. Isn't there the? Uh, the all right, I'm, I'm just I'm just looking to show what I did to, to reorganize you, 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 this so that the the well, well all right our next all right the, 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 Dave, Dave the, I think the file uh, I, get, I agree with Damien the file the patch 004 uh, is uh, okay. is easier to understand hey where's the patch dude tell me so dpdk slash dpdk two two zero underscore patches oh. No, no, no. Go back, 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 back. Bill, no, back. Oh yeah, I get. I'm Before on build it. root, dpdk, dpdk, two, uh, two, two zero or two one zero patches. But two, two, two zero is is shorter. Um. Uh, zero zero four. Oh. All right. Yeah, I mean, how would you put it? What 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 we did. You know, long back was to, um, you know, move move next into the first cache line because substantially every driver hits it. You know, there's a li there's just a little bit of that going on. What are you guys What are you guys chuckling about? Am I am I in major trouble or what?